Hi, this statistics video explores the idea of interquartile range. It's another measure of the spread of a bunch of scores, how spread out scores are, and uh, it's called the interquartile range. Let's have a look. The interquartile range is uh, the difference between the upper quartile and the lowest quartile. So there's a subtraction of two items there. I'll explain what a, an upper quartile and a lower quartile is here. Um, so that's the way we explain that, Q3 minus Q1, and it's best if we have a look at um, a bunch of examples to show you what we're talking about here, but the interquartile range is the range, how spread out the middle 50% of scores are. It doesn't take into account all the scores, and what's good about the interquartile range is that uh, it's not thrown off badly by one really big or really small score. It, uh, it helps when... Um, it helps us to find the spread of the scores without being affected badly by one really big or really small score. Okay, so I've got a bunch of scores here uh, from 23 up to 31. And the way we find the interquartile range firstly is to uh, identify the median. You can see that if we put that red line there, that's the middle of the scores there. The median is going to be 26, the average of those two middle scores there. It chops the, uh, the scores in half. We're going to concentrate on the first half and the second half to find the middle of those as well. Um, that'll help us find the what we call the upper quartile and the lower quartile. Now this lower quartile here is the median of our um, bottom half. Now we were left with five scores here, so the median or the middle score in that first half is going to be that third score. So we call that Q1. It's quartile one. It's uh, really it's chopping the uh, this up into four bits in the end. One bit there, one bit there, one bit there, one bit there. That's why we call it a quartile. It's kind of like the border between uh, that that indicates uh, where uh, the quarter waypoint is there. Okay. And um, if we have a look at the five scores that are on the right-hand half and find the middle of that, that's going to be our upper quartile, or our Q3. So we found the median, then we found like the middle point, or the median of the first half, and we called that Q1. So if you, if you find a half of a half, you're finding a quarter, aren't you? So that's where we get that quartile word from. And um, then if we find the middle of the second half, what we're going to do is uh, to take the number from Q3 and subtract the number from Q1 to find our interquartile range. So interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. In this case, it's 28 minus our 24. Those were the numbers that were in those spots there. So our interquartile range we'll quote as, as being 4. It's an indication of how spread out the scores are. In this case, not very spread out. But um, so if you can imagine that if instead of 31 being our largest score there, let's say it was 81, a score that's way above all the other scores. If we did the normal range of taking the highest score minus the lowest score, that would give us a range of about uh, 60 almost. And uh, the interquartile range um, is able to use some scores that are more towards the center and not affected by a really big or a really small score. That's why we need an interquartile range. It's often very helpful uh, in situations where there can be one huge score that would throw uh, our indication of how spread out the scores are uh, really way off kilter. So a um, bit tricky, but uh, it's a measure of spread. It's not as easy as the range, taking the highest score minus the lowest score. It involves us finding the uh, quarter waypoint and the three quarter waypoint and uh, subtracting those two values one from the other. Alright, so that helps us measure the spread of scores. Let's have a look at another uh, example, just to rub it in here to uh, consolidate our learning. We've got a bunch of scores here, and uh, in this case, the previous example, we had uh, a median that was halfway between two middle scores there. We've got an odd number of scores in this case, uh, and so our median um, line actually takes out of uh, the equation, out of our consideration, that middle score, and then we just concentrate on the first half and the second half, a bit like we did for the rest of uh, our previous example. So um, in the previous example, the, uh, the scores either side of the median were sort of counted into our consideration, but when we've got a single middle score, it's almost like we eliminate that and just concentrate on the left-hand and the right-hand sides that are uh, left. So anyway, 
Uh, the middle of the left hand side is 5, so we call that Q1. The middle of the right hand side you can see is that 8 there, so we call that Q3. And uh, we go through that normal subtraction Q3 minus Q1. The Q3 number was 8 in this case, and the Q1 number was 5. So the only difference there, we, we complete that uh, subtraction and find the interquartile range of 3 there. The only difference uh, between that and the last example was when we found a single middle score, uh, we kind of deleted that from our considerations and then concentrated it on the left hand side and the right hand side for finding our Q1 and our Q3. Alright, so that's how we find our interquartile range. It's the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, Q3 minus Q1. It's like the three quarter score minus the one quarter score. Gives us an idea of spread and it's uh, great uh, when we have it's great to avoid a, a really weird answer um, if we had a really high or a really low upper or uh, lowest score. Thanks for listening. See you next time.